What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. I did not think we'd get the opportunity to have a hands-on with the Honor 7X. However, here we are. We finally got one in-house. I was really excited about this just because I am a Huawei fan. Uh, and obviously for y'all that don't know, Huawei uh, makes Honor. It's kind of like a little sub-branch of theirs. It's kind of like their entry-level phones. Uh, this phone is really more of their modern phones, especially at this entry-level price point of $199. Um, you're getting a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. You're getting a good camera. It actually has a dual camera setup, which we'll go hands-on with in a minute. Uh, it, the style, it's awesome. And like I said, you can't compare the price. This phone looks like it should cost a whole bunch more than $199. Uh, unfortunately, though, there is no Android Pay on this. There's no NFC. That means it uses micro USB instead of USB Type-C, which is definitely a disappointment considering USB Type-C has taken off so well recently. Uh, and this actually does not have Android Oreo on it. It is running 7.0. Uh, there's no Android 8.0 on it at launch. However, having said that, let's go ahead and jump into this unboxing. I just wanted to kind of show you this phone. Uh, and see what y'all think as well. I have opened this up. I have checked it out already, just so you know. Here is the device. You can see how gorgeous it actually looks. I love this blue color. Like I said, you have your dual camera set up in the back. You do have your bands that kind of ruin the look of it. I don't mind it too much. You have your power button, your volume rocker. The power button is not texturized. There's kind of no way to differentiate the volume rocker and the, uh, and the power button. You have a dual SIM card, and that is it. Pretty clean looking device, like I said. You have your fingerprint reader at the back. Let's go ahead and turn this on. I have not set up the device at all. I have literally just got it, opened it up, checked it out, and wanted to do this video for you guys. Inside the box, they actually do include a nice little silicon case, so you don't have to worry about that, which is nice for a price point on this phone. You have your wall adapter and your micro USB cable as well in the box. Again, it is disappointing. There is no USB Type-C. And then there you also have your SIM ejector. That is it for as far as what comes in this box. I'm gonna go ahead and run through this setup and I'll be right back guys when we get on the home screen. All right guys, we are back. We have everything loaded up. I went ahead and registered a fingerprint as well to kind of give you an idea of how fast this fingerprint sensor is on this phone. It's probably one of the quicker ones I've ever used. Uh, one thing I did not touch on as well, uh, for those of you that do care, you can see there is a slight camera hump in the back of this device. Nothing crazy, but just know if you sit the phone down, it will have a little bit of rock to it, of course. Uh, having said that, um, for those of you not familiar with the Honor brand, or like I said, or Huawei, it does run a very, very skinned version, a heavily skinned version of Android. I believe it's called uh, Emu or something of that nature. Uh, it is not my favorite. It's not my cup of tea, per se. You can see just how, I almost want to say cartoony the apps look. I'm not a super big fan. However, obviously, it is Android. You can customize it as you wish. Put a pixel launcher on it or whatever, and you're good to go. Anyways, getting back to that fingerprint sensor I talked about, I want to kind of show you guys how quick it is. I'll go ahead and just touch it here, and we'll turn it over, and you'll see. Let's do that again. One, two, and again. You can see just how quick that fingerprint sensor actually is on this device. It's not bad at all, considering this is a sub $200 device. Again, this is running only 7.1. Unfortunately, it is not running Android Oreo out of the box, so you're missing out some of those new, uh, the new notification badges, the picture-in-picture -picture mode. However, it has been promised an Oreo update in the near future. Just keep that in mind. It does have fingerprint, um, uh, like the swipe fingerprint gestures. You are having, you you do have all those as well as being able to scroll through your photos, answer calls with it, take photos, depending on what app you're in, uh, you're actually able to do various things with that fingerprint sensor. It's pretty cool. Uh, you're getting, I believe it's a 2160 by 1080 display. Again, not top of the line, but it is not bad by any means. 
Let's go ahead and actually try to load up a, uh, a website here on Chrome and see how it looks. Let's see how long this will take. Uh, let's go to Yahoo. Not too bad at all. Let's go ahead and do YouTube. You can see it does move pretty well. Click on a video. Come here. Come here. One. And you see it does give you that option for a full screen display. So it'll stretch out and you will get the most of your, of your display instead of having the letterboxing effect. I'm not, like I said, a huge fan of this display. It does not look that bad. Considering the price point, you don't have great viewing angles. You can clearly see a shift in color as soon as you uh, you move it side to side. Again, for $200, I guess you can't be super picky in regards to that, though. Supposedly, this phone was in development for 15 months, and they went through a ton of, uh, ton of prototypes to, to achieve this. One thing that will appease a lot of people. There is a three and a half millimeter headphone jack though. Like I said earlier in the video, unfortunately there is no USB type C. There is no NFC chip inside for Android Pay if you use that. You will be able to use the bokeh effect and all that with the dual camera setup. Haven't got a chance to put that through the test yet. I will, uh, as well as video stabilization and all that. The main camera lens is a 16 megapixel lens with an aperture of f 2.2. And I believe the secondary camera is only a two megapixel camera. Um, which is meant to shoot exclusively in monochrome, unlike some of the other phones that are out there. Um, the screens do lack a little bit of pop, like I said. Um, it, shooting in low light is, of course, not going to be ideal. The, uh, the aperture just does not get low enough to open up to let enough light in, in dark environments, unfortunately. Hopefully they will go ahead and update this phone to 8.0 soon. I believe there is a 4 gig, 64 gig, um, excuse me, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gig ROM version of these that are out um, for a couple dollars more. I would probably splurge for that. However, the few games I have run on it have not given me any issue. Just keep that in mind though. Uh, battery life has been pretty good. Battery life will get you through about a day with about 20% left. It has a 33, excuse me, 3,340 milliamp hour battery in it. Um, again, it does have fast charging, but it is through micro USB. So just keep all that into consideration. Considering the processor and the screen resolution, I expected a little bit more in the battery life department. However, I was not disappointed by any means. This is great for a backup phone or even as someone's primary phone that just does not want to spend flagship prices on this device. That's really it, guys. Let me know. Are y'all going to be picking up one of these? I'll throw a link in the description. I believe Amazon has it on pre-order right now. You should be able to get them on the 23rd of January. Um, are you going to skip this and go to the OnePlus 5T? Let me know down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. Thumbs up this video. Let me know what you guys think below. Till next time.